When it comes to the King in Yellow stories, diehard fans and casual readers alike often ask the very same question. Why is Chambers' fictional text within a text, The King in Yellow, a stage play? Why is it a stage play of all things? Why isn't it a book of magic like the Necronomicon, or an immersive reference book like Borges' The Book of Sand? Never mind the fact that these authors came later, after Chambers, why is The King in Yellow a stage play of all things? When this question arises, many people point to a play by Oscar Wilde, a stage play called Salome, which, like Chambers' own King in Yellow, was deemed obscene and publicly banned, presented bleak, gruesome, and existential ideas, and, when sold illegally by underground booksellers, was wrapped in yellow paper. And this answer is very likely true. In addition to Salome, however, I think there's a work which exercises equal, if not greater, influence on Chambers' choice to have The King in Yellow be a stage play. That work is Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Conqueror Worm, which appears in his ghost story, Lygia. In the text of the poem, we are told that a throng of angels are all attending a gala night at a theater. They're attending to see a play of hopes and fears. And whatever this play is, it's something cosmic because it is set and timed to the moving of the planets, the music of the spheres. Angels watching a cosmic stage play, then. And what are the contents of this play? Well, a number of mimes who run around on stage Mimes whose movements are not under their own control. Instead, they move at the bidding of vast formless things, shadows and forces that are beyond the space of the stage. And even as they move, they're chasing things that don't exist. Phantoms. Literally phantoms, says the poem. So the stage play presents us with pathetic little figures that cannot control themselves, who are running around chasing imaginary things. And what happens then? Well, a giant worm crawls on stage and in a grisly, gory manner slaughters the mimes and eats them up. With this event, the play is over, and the angels stand up and they nod and they agree to each other, yep, this is humankind all right. The play is the tragedy man, and the hero is the conqueror worm. The idea is clear. From the perspective of divinity, from the perspective of the universe, human beings are little more than worm food, and that's it. It's a poem as gothic as it is metaphysical, and it was one with which Chambers was doubtlessly acquainted. The Conqueror Worm tells of a stage play, like The King in Yellow. This stage play is full of bleak but profound truths, like The King in Yellow. These truths bear the theme of nihilism and hopelessness and despair, like The King in Yellow. And the play indicates that whatever heavenly position human beings might strive for is forever lost, lost to them, like The King in Yellow. The Conqueror Worm was thus a huge influence on Chambers, a likely source of why The King in Yellow, the text within a text, is a stage play, and it's also from this poem that we get many of our monsters in the game, Five Acts, The King in Yellow RPG. Welcome to PhD and D, everyone. I'm Dr. Bowers, and as you know, for a while now, I've been working with a talented team to develop a TTRPG based on The King in Yellow mythos. And when I say based on the King in Yellow mythos, I mean it. I mean based on Chambers' work and things that inspired Chambers. Not Lovecraft, not Stephen King, not Clive Barker, Chambers. And this raises the question, why does our TTRPG have monsters in it? Unless you count the King in Yellow himself, who only appears for two sentences in the original four short stories, or unless you count a weird groundskeeper from the Yellow Sign or the weird organist from In the Court of the Dragon, Chambers doesn't really feature a whole lot of monsters. Yet monsters are fun, and we wanted to have them, and we wanted to do something that was as faithful to Chambers as possible. We could have done what Robin Laws does in his excellent Yellow King RPG, which is reach into some of Chambers' other work, like In Search of the Unknown, and take some of his fantastic creatures from there. But one, Robin Laws already did that, and two, we thought it might be fun to reach into the areas of Gothic literature which influenced Chambers himself, and draw from there. In Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Conqueror Worm, we have one sort of monster, the Conqueror Worm itself, and we also have ghastly angels. Angels who are despondent and pallid and wan. So those are the basic sorts of monsters that our game has. We have Conqueror Worms and Undead Angels. And this actually ties into the lore of our game, our setting, and our interpretation of what Carcosa is. In our game, as the Conqueror Worm indicates, a heavenly position has been lost to humankind forever lost. And that's what Carcosa was. Carcosa is, or was, 
heaven. The old school Christian heaven from medieval times where angels live and God dwells on a throne and all that stuff. It's destroyed in our game. It's ruined and there's nowhere to go when you die now. The angels, they're all dead. Now they're undead monsters. God itself, dead. And now undead is the king in yellow. And as for the shattered, cloudy, mystical body of heaven itself, it has grown moldy and rotten and festered with parasites. Just as maggots emerge from old bread, so from the wreckage of heaven there emerge these alien worms. Worms of Carcosa, conqueror worms. These monsters are gothic symbols of death, despair, and disappointment, of existential nihilism and unrequited yearning. They're literally in the work of Poe that inspired Chambers to make The King in Yellow a stage play, and they resonate with the spirit and theme of Chambers' tales themselves. Now, like Poe, Chambers drew a lot of influence from biblical imagery when setting out to describe horrific scenes. Poe's narrator from The Raven cries out, Is there balm in Gilead? And the pages of The King in Yellow in Chambers would seem to answer, No. So we have biblically inspired monsters in our game. The Leviathan, the Behemoth, the Angel of Death, and more. So in our game, from the PC's perspective, the world is threatened by undead angels and worms from the wreckage of heaven. They are coming to Earth. They are coming here. They seek destruction. And as for why, well, you can only dread why. And in addition to threatening the planet Earth, they also visit the PCs in their shared dreams. They cry baleful prophecies about where the yellow sign is. They attempt to kill the PCs in their sleep. And as for what the PCs can do about it, we'll get to that next time in our video about character classes. So there's a brief video about the monsters in our game, what sorts of things they are, and why we have them in the first place. What do you think? Do you find that exciting? Are you curious? If so, and you want to know more, don't forget to sign up at nilhemoth.com, N-I-L-H-E-M-O-T-H dot com. Our Kickstarter is rapidly approaching its launch, and if you sign up now, you won't miss any updates. Speaking of which, that's it for now, but we have another update coming soon. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to do all the internet things. Click like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want notifications about new updates on this channel. And thanks.